Greetings, I'm Kurt Colvin from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Welcome to this podcast on the Department of Defense Systems Engineering versus Boeing Systems Engineering. So this is really a case study in government versus commercial systems engineering. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to compare two airplanes, the Air Force C-17 and the 777. Let me start just by giving you a small introduction to each of these airplanes. So the 777 is the world's largest twin engine commercial jet airplane. It's pretty distinctive in that it has these gigantic diameter high bypass, high bypass engines. It has six wheels on each of the, the main landing gear and then this gigantic vertical tail and that's kind of how I identify it when I see them at airports. Uh, it has the capacity for over 300 passengers. It has almost a range of 10,000 nautical miles. It was really designed to replace older, obsolete, wide-bodied airplanes. And it really fits the market between the smaller Boeing 767 and the larger Boeing 747. It was designed to kind of fit that middle market, and um, so that's kind of where it, it fits in terms of size. Um, let's see, a couple other quick things about it was it, uh, as of mid-2011, it's had uh, almost 1,300 orders, and they've delivered about 950. So there's a pretty good backlog of orders, which is... Uh, which says that they're still building them kind of full bore. Uh, its competitors are the Airbus 330 and 340, and even the underdevelopment Airbus 350 are kind of its competitors. The new 787 Dreamliner is slightly smaller, so it's not quite a direct competitor, but the 787 is a pretty different architecture. It's supposed to be a lot more efficient and the 777. Its final assembly happens in Everett, Washington. Very quickly, the intro to the C-17 is it's used primarily as a cargo hauler of either cargo itself or, or troops. It does things like tactical airlift, medical eva evacuation, or airdrop missions. It was developed for the Air Force starting in the 70s through the 90s, and the prime contractor was McDonnell Douglas. So I'll talk about the developer as McDonnell Douglas, but in 1998, Boeing bought McDonnell Douglas, so now it's actually a Boeing C-17, but it was designed and developed by McDonnell Douglas. It has the ability to take off and land on short, unimproved runways, like dirt, gravel, and compacted sand. It's very maneuverable. It has a lot of technology in the wing system with its high lift devices and blown flaps. It's kind of, the program is very well known for being greatly over budget, very late and prolonged, and not meeting the performance requirements that were initially set for it. Um, it's Final assembly happens in Long Beach, California at the former McDonnell Douglas, now Boeing plant. So why would I choose to compare these? And again, this is just kind of a snapshot, a data, a data point for you to compare the development of two kind of similar systems. And by similar, I mean that they were about the same time. They were finished in about the mid-90s. They basically had the same technologies available to the designers. They're pretty comparable in size and complexity, pretty much comparable architectures. So the structures and whatnot are, are very similar. So you could pretty much say these are pretty comparable systems. But some of the differences that I'm going to outline, and this is really an outline for this talk right here, is to talk about the differences in customers the characteristics of the customer, the different requirements that came out of those customers, the different schedule, funding, and technology, the, the, the difference in the way the programs handled those, 
the difference in how the oversight of the program was performed. Really then, uh, I talk a little bit about if we consider those successful development efforts or not. And then finally, to kind of summarize the difference between systems engineering on the government side and commercial systems engineering. So let's jump right into the customer. So the customer for the Boeing 777 is really the market. And I guess this is fundamentally a, a major difference between commercial organizations and a government organization. Boeing had to develop the airplane to meet the needs of their, the customer. Otherwise, uh, the market, the people in the market won't buy the airplane. And so it would be a failure if Boeing built this airplane that didn't meet the customer's needs and uh, nobody bought it. So the way they did this was they implemented this very articulated working together program and the way they did that is that they went out and gathered lots of stakeholders, people that were potential users of the airplane, and they used those people to ferret out what the needs were. So they got eight of the major airlines, and they're the ones you would think, um, and they got those airlines and the people to tell them what they wanted in an airplane. And from that, Boeing spent a lot of time, effort, and money to get those needs out of those. Pretty good example of what's known as concurrent engineering, where you're not only designing the product, but you're designing the process to build the product and the process to support the product once it's out there. To kind of contrast that, the customer for the Boeing C-17, or sorry, the McDonnell Douglas C-17, is really the people in the Air Force that make decisions. And you might talk about the Air Force generals that had their needs that they need met. One of the characteristics about that as a customer is that generals rotate uh, regularly. So whoever the general is this year may not be the same general next year. So there's a potential that the needs or the customer changes throughout the development effort. It may also be that those generals really don't consult the users of the system, and so they may not know the real needs of the system users. The Air Force is very focused on performance. They have cargo requirements. They have range requirements. They have maneuverability requirements. They're very focused on the performance of the system, and they're not worried so much on Will we make a profit? Will we be able to sustain the program for years? They just want a system that does exactly what they want in terms of performance, which says that they, not, they may not fully comprehend the consequences of some of those demands on things like cost schedule and performance trade-offs. And I'll talk a little bit more about the specifics of that in a minute here. The needs of the Air Force are not often open to public debate and public comment and input from lots of people. They're very confidential in nature, and that's with good reason, right? They're a military organization. They're trying to have an advantage over uh, their threats. So it's not an open dialogue that happens when they start discussing what the needs, what the requirements should be for uh, a military system. So whereas Boeing consulted many stakeholders, the Air Force has relatively few that drive what the needs of the system uh, are to be. 